What's up, everybody? This is Master Ian Gamer. Welcome back to a stream. It's been a minute. It's been a long, long minute. Oy. Well, I'm back, and we got some exciting stuff today. Hello, Peter. Hello, Tristavision. Hello, Shotgunner Knight. Hello, Lyric. Ooh, Tristavision. Another membership subscription, three months. So glad you and everyone else in the Discord was able to see my concept map. It was really fun to make, and thank and think of the hero interactions and lore. <laughs> thank you very much, Tristavision, for the membership renewal. And yeah, that map was awesome. I loved watching the little walkthrough of that. You put a lot of effort into that. I was surprised. <laughs> that was really cool. Hey, Proto, how's it going? Bumblebeeb, a.k.a. Soup, good to see you as well. Catelyn, hello. Or is it Caitlyn? I guess we'll never know. Phil, the other guy. Pikmin 4 is a good game. How do you know? It's not out yet, is it? Oh, man, I'm so hyped with all the Pikmin stuff they showed off. Oh, I was waiting so long for them to bring Pikmin 1 and 2 to Switch. At long last, I have a reason to purchase a Nintendo Switch. I, I, I thought maybe I'd be able to slip by this generation and not have to get one, but nope, looks like I'm going to be buying a Switch. Because <laughs> now all four Pikmin games will be on Switch. And uh, I, I, I can't just not do that. Like, <laughs> I need a Switch just for Pikmin. Hey, you Cody and Vision, how's it going? Good to see you. Ah, uh, Phil, you're playing the demo. Okay, fair. The Overwatch anime doesn't look quite as good as the Doomfist origin story, but at least they're getting one. Yeah, um... So that was a thing. They sort of just threw that announcement out. Out of nowhere. N no build-up. No special... Anything. It's just, oh, Twitter. Hey, look! There is an Overwatch animated series. Though, to be fair. Yeah, let, let, let's talk about that. Before we get into playing some actual matches, let's talk about that. Yeah, it's... I don't know. I'm, I don't know quite how to feel about it. It's very short. They've announced the runtime of each of the three episodes. And they're totaling at, like, what, about 18 minutes collectively between the three of them? Some... Um, it's short. Very short, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Short and sweet, you know, it, it can still be a really interesting bit of look into the story of Overwatch and everything. Um, let me read some of these comments real quick. Hey, I had to refresh stream because stream didn't start for you. Uh-oh. Yeah, hopefully, that's this whole side note. Hopefully the stream will be working. I, I did have a long-fought battle with my ISP, and I think I'm finally able to stream again, hence why I'm streaming now. Yeah, the animated miniseries and hearing interesting stuff about other creators playing Season 6 early. I'm assuming you weren't invited to play it. No, I was not, of course. I was not invited. What happened to the Netflix show? Well, maybe this, maybe much like the PvE, this three-part miniseries is what's left of the Netflix series. You think they're trying to pull a cyberpunk edge runners to try and avoid that bad rap? Eh, I don't think so. Um, uh, I would be shocked. Like, I would be beyond shocked if this miniseries comes anywhere close to edge runners. <laughs> uh, I, I am confident in saying it won't, <laughs> and I haven't seen it yet. But that's just how good edge runners is, so yeah. Hoping each episode would be 10 minutes at least. Yeah, it, it's short, and it's probably going to cover a very small bit of content, but it'll be nice to get it. And as I've seen a lot of people talking about thus far, it's certainly possible that this is like an experimental sort of thing for Blizzard, where they're like, okay, let's not invest a ton of time and money. Let's just do something small, push it out, see what people think. If people like it, then they'll do more. And thus far, people seem pretty excited for it, which is good. I'm glad people are excited for it.
Really hope this is a trial to possibly pitch an ex- uh, pitch to a streaming service for an actual show. Also, it's pronounced Kate Lynn. Lol. <laughs> it's chill. People get it all the time. Okay. It, it, if it was if it was a K instead of a C, I think it would have been, been more intuitive. But like you know, C's are like a wild card. You never know whether it's C uh, or K with a C. So you know, don't think it will, but. Think it's an attempt to garner some goodwill to counter their BS lately? No, I mean this this would have been in production long before the whole PVE debacle that went down. So no, I think this was probably planned from the start. A like me, the original show pitched may have worked to rope in an animated studio for this. Yeah, I I think this is hopefully an experiment to get something bigger later down the line. Glad it's not locked behind streaming. That's also true. I'm glad you can just watch it free on YouTube. You think they will over nerf Zen? Feel like if Discord is the only thing keeping him relevant? Yeah, I'm, I'm curious about some of those upcoming balance changes they announced. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think Zen's Discord needs to be nerfed. And I even say that as a tank main. Honestly, I don't think I see Zen played enough these days that his Discord's a problem. So I don't think nerfing Discord is necessary. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Release dates and runtime so the other parts are released. Yeah, they. I think it's a weekly basis pretty much starting on the 6th. So hype for future episodes. Want a Sigma episode? of the animated series you're talking. Cause yeah, that would be cool if they start branching it out. Cause this one looks like it's just going to be like Omnic crisis or like pre Omnic crisis mainly sort of building up to that. Never knew about Aurora prior to today. What's the deal with her? So if I'm remembering correctly, she was mainly talked about in the stone by stone short story, which featured Symmetra and Zenyatta. And it was revealed that she's, she was like the original sentient Omnic, so to say, and was the one that in some form sacrificed herself to bring sentience to all other Omnics, like Zenyatta and Ramatra and all of them. Um, I don't know if we know if there's too much like canon beyond that. I'm trying to think. There may be little details here. I'm sure you could envision you'd know. You could correct me if I'm getting anything wrong. Yes, go read Stone by Stone. It is a, it is the best short story for Overwatch. The Zen or the Sim nerf will be good for you as a diva main. Yeah, I can feel that. <laughs> She's robot Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> That's a way to put it. She is robot Jesus. Yeah, you, you could say that. <laughs> there was an interaction with Echo and Ramatra where they talked about her recently. Oh, okay. I'm trying to remember. That sounds familiar. I've probably heard it. Oh, that's right. Sojourn novel informs us that Liao made Aurora in Australia. Yeah, so there's a bit more we know about her as well. Yeah, one other aspect, um, which has me a bit hesitant with this animated series, before I delve into actually playing some matches here. Um, the animation doesn't look great. <laughs> it's that sort of, like, cheapo Netflix, like, stiff, almost slideshow-esque animation, which I'm, I personally am really not a fan of that style. Uh, I like animation that moves. <laughs> But again, if this is just an experiment on Blizzard's part, I understand why they would make it cheap like that. I understand why they would make it simpler because, you know, it's like a prototype in a sense. But like seeing that animation, I was like, uh, they couldn't go something a little more visually interesting. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see how it actually is, though. Also, Proto, you're in the teacup image. That little girl is Bonnie. Bonnie. Oh, um, interesting. 
that you 47 to 49 is Aurora Awakening. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that's definitely what that was. Hey, Twist Division, $10 super chat. Thank you so much. They should give McCree his old flashback, except instead of stunning, it just blinds for a second and you slowly get your vision back. Oh, I'm very hesitant. I am very hesitant with the idea of a blinding effect. I don't think they should add that to Flashbang. I think that would be more annoying than any iteration it's ever been. Uh, I wouldn't mind if they brought back the old stun for Flashbang, because I kind of preferred the original stun in Overwatch 1 than anything the Mag Grenade's ever done, but I don't know. Speaking of blinding, though, if there is a blinding effect added to a character or their abilities, it'll most certainly be on that new Peruvian support hero, because they, they just keep teasing the fact that she's very light-based. I'm obviously the most precious. And there's Kiriko late to work again. Wonder how the ultimates will work in the show. <laughs> I'm sure they're not going to stick that closely to, like, hero abilities. They're probably going to be more like the animated shorts where it's like, oh, Earth Shatter's a thing Reinhardt can do, but it's not like an ultimate per se. Disappointed by the animation, but hopefully the heart and story is there to make up for it. Keen to see the OG squad in action during the Omnic Crisis too. Yeah, if the story of it is good, um, then it'll be good. It's just a shame seeing that it, they went with such a simplistic animation style. Because personally, I really like the visuals of animation, like in general. And anytime I see a studio just like go all out with like animation specifically, oh, it's so good. Definitely a bit of limited animation in there. Quite uh, Looks quite like the style of Vox Machina. So action could certainly be better. Yeah, it does have a similar style to that, doesn't it? Thoughts on the new support hero? What kind of abilities do I think she'll have? That is a good question. Obviously something light-based. She'll probably heal by shining light on people. The same way Lucille heals by singing. Not, not singing, but, you know, playing beats at people. Um... Her weapon, I still think, looks like some sort of, like, sword-gun hybrid, so she'll probably have some kind of melee component to her abilities. I don't know whether that'll be just damage-dealing type melee or what, but... <sighs> yeah, the, the, the image they showed off was so interesting, too. The big machine, where it's like she's being infused with light. Because it almost gives this impression of, like, she was subjected to this as, like, an experiment, almost. Just based on, like, the presentation of that image. Is is that actually what it is? I have no idea. I don't know if that's something she did herself or if she was the victim of something. But yeah, I, I am admittedly more intrigued by the character than I was previously with this new image they released. Uh, I wasn't terribly interested in her with the initial teaser. I was like, oh, it's a character that... Does a thing. I, I don't know. I didn't think she looked that interesting, but I am intrigued by this new image because it's like, oh, what sort of backstory are they hinting at there? You want a lightning electric based hero who can shoot chain lightning like Palpatine in Star Wars Battlefront 2? <laughs> that would be cool. I don't think, yeah, I don't think this character is going to be lightning based. I think it's more sunlight based. So For chain lightning, that'd be a cool idea. Hey, Trash, welcome to the stream. You have not missed much, basically just discussion about the uh, animated series that was announced today. How many times do we reckon the new support will be rebalanced on release? That is a good question. <laughs> Hopefully less than Life Weaver. They should just hire the JoJo team to animate the animated series. That would be an interesting direction for them to take. Reminds you of Spider-Man when Doc Ock creates that machine thingy and says he has the power of the sun. <laughs> yeah, I saw a meme of that somewhere. I don't know. If, I don't remember if it was in my Discord server or somewhere on Twitter, but I saw people joking about that.
Could be a fire damage dealing support with all the links to the sun. That's a really good point. I, I wonder if there will be like a burn damage effect, like like ash is dynamite. <sighs> Potentially, I could maybe see something like that. We have Winston for lightning based abilities anyways. Yeah, I don't think he's... I don't think Winston quite dominates the lightning, like, theme enough that, like, they couldn't have another lightning-based hero. But certainly, you know, it's Tesla Cannon. Am I still working on hero concepts? Uh, not at the moment, and I haven't for a long time. Uh, I mean, I've talked about the hero concepts before. Like, I always enjoyed making them, but they were, frankly, a lot of work for, admittedly, not a ton of payoff. Like, some of them would really pop off. Like, the Overlord concept, my Junker Queen one, did really well. But, like, most of them just, like, didn't really perform that well as videos. And I was like, eh, like, they're, they're cool to do, but are they really worth the effort that it took to put into them? And I kind of felt like, ultimately, they just weren't. Because it's always weird trying to, like, market them as well. Because it's like, oh, like, new hero concept. And then people are like, oh, you're clickbaiting. You're trying to present it as a new hero. And it's like... It, it, it feels hard to sort of sell hero concepts as like a like a video because like it's hard to get like the right sort of impressions from people on them which i was just, i always just found that really frustrating in doing them so it's also a factor in why i don't really focus on them anymore i think it makes the most sense for the new hero's ultimate to be a flash or some kind of blind personally i'd figure it'd kind of be annoying if her normal abilities were flash-based, even if her ultimate is flash-based, I'm highly skeptical of that as, like, part of her kit. You already have enough damage over time in the game. Eh, well, there is a good bit, that is true. I think a flame-based hero could be annoying to play against, though. I don't know. I, I, I think a pyro... Like a TF2 pyro type hero could work in Overwatch. I think it could happen. Water based hero would be cool to see. Yeah. What's the closest we have to water, like thematically for the existing heroes? Like May has ice, which is pretty close, but nothing directly water like. Only reason you say a flashbang would be close on McCree is because of its close range. Uh, even then, I, I uh, being blinded in a game like Overwatch, I think would just be a really tough mechanic to integrate because it's so frustrating to lose visibility. Who's my favorite designed hero in the game? Uh, well, my personal favorite would be Wrecking Ball, for sure. Don't think they'll go with a flash because they ditched giving Kiri a smoke. Seems like they didn't want to lean into vision obstruction. Yeah, was it Kiriko who had the smoke grenade? Maybe it was. I do I do remember that being like a thing they talked about. I couldn't remember which hero it was specifically. EV of an old Junker Pyro support idea you'd still like to play with? Yeah. Junkers would be perfect for a flamethrower type hero. We've already got three, three and a half Junkers, if you count Wrecking Ball. <laughs> but I would love to see more Junkers. Although I know I know some people are upset that the entirety of Australia's representation in Overwatch is Junkers. <laughs> Which is fair, I get it. But like, I just love the Junker faction so much that I'm like, yes, please give me more Junkers. <laughs> they should just add Darth Vader to save the game. F-Balance Vader is lit. <laughs> That 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 would be something to have Darth Vader just walk in. Ramatra's skin is water, kinda. You're talking about the uh, Poseidon one. Yeah, that's true. Just a skin though, not really his hero design. Still hooked on a janitor support idea. Definitely a spray cleaner ability in a mop that damages close range and slings water at people. That could be fun. <laughs> Smoke Grenade, I could see being an ultimate on top of getting some other effect. <sighs> Maybe. I, I think 
in terms of like obscuring vision, a smoke grenade would be preferable over a flashbang because then it's like a localized area that you can physically move away from in order to regain vision as opposed to just being permanently locked to not having sight for the duration of your the duration of the ability. Funnily, you find the Japanese rep worse. <laughs> yeah, all, all Japanese people are ninjas. <laughs> hey, Proto, thank you for the membership renewal. Another 13 months. Member for, or remember R for 13 months, not like Twitch. For, member for 13 months. Thank you, Proto. First of all, Tinky Wongle Dorgle Snippy Juggle Buggy Boggler Donkle Finky Winks McGloober Donkeys. Second of all, keep up the great work like always. Wait till you see him on my bike, Kiriko Komori. Thank you, Proto. Uh, I don't know where Sigma is. Sigma should be screaming right about now. Um, unless the alert system on like the back end has changed or doesn't do that for membership like renewal type things anymore. I don't know. Somebody who isn't a member. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Man, I always give Kiriko a hard time. Sigma was real late. Then again, I, Sigma has an excuse. He doesn't really have a grasp on time at this point. All three Japanese characters were basically from one family is way more insular than an entire civilization. Okay, yeah, that that's entirely fair. Oh, uh, God. I, I still wish Kiriko wasn't related to the Shimadas, but rather was like a young character that Hanzo would like pick up as like a new protege, basically. Because then you could be like, you know, Hanzo failed at being an older brother for Genji, and now he's all depressed. But then he would come across Kiriko, who'd be this troubled ruffian youth, and Hanzo could then be su the successful big brother to Kiriko. And Kiriko would be like the Genji replacement. And then you could interweave Hanzo and Kiriko while also connecting them back to Genji and thus back to the greater story. It would give Hanzo something to do that isn't just him being depressed and mopey for eternity. It would make Kiriko a far more interesting character other than just, heh, wait till you see me on my bike. I'm good at everything. Ugh, such a missed opportunity. Such a missed opportunity. If they make an actual show for Overwatch, which streaming service would it be good on? That is a good question. I feel like Netflix is sort of the go-to, but they might do it somewhere else. What countries and continents still need representation? Some Pacific Islander rep would be good. Malga is perfect for that, yeah. <laughs> Kiriko's late because she's riding on her bike, which is still not seen, so she could be holding a secret. Yeah, she's riding on a non-existent bike. That's why it's so slow. Hanzo would be the Batman and Kiriko is the Robin. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. What do I think about the upcoming Overwatch anime? I'm cautiously excited about it. Um... It's very short, which is a little concerning, but it will be nice to get a new type of like story medium, basically, because we haven't had this type of like proper mini series before. So that's cool. I think the animation looks very cheap, which is unfortunate, but I'm hoping this three part mini series will be sort of like a precursor to potentially something bigger later down the line. Like this is maybe just like an experiment where Blizzard's like, let's see how much people actually like this type of animated content. And thus far, people seem to be pretty hyped for it, which I think is good. Bold, new, better Genji <laughs> with a bike, <laughs> supposedly. Blizzard needs to add you to the team. Uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't think I'd work well at Blizzard. <laughs> Hanzo needed that Joel treatment. Yeah, that, that's a really good comparison right there. Comparing it to The Last of Us. 
even if they do pair them up now, it's actually been tainted by the family link. Yeah, I mean, the <sighs> ignoring the straight up just inconsistent timeline with the fact that Kiriko is simultaneously 19 and 30 years old. Ignoring that, yeah, the, the, the family link is just weird and prevents them basically from doing anything like that. Like the idea I presented. So. Watch ABK have their own streaming service and charge $30 per month. <sighs> you joke, but <laughs> that's not so absurd, I think. Ever going to bring back Hero Speculation videos? I miss them. Yeah, probably. I'll, I might do a dedicated speculation video for this character, since we actually have things to work with going forward. Um, that would probably be a bit closer to the launch of Season 6. I would do that, though, just what's a bit more relevant. But certainly this is a character that we could actually speculate on. Obviously the most precious. Frodo, thank you so much for the $2 super chat. You would be suggesting cars and robots at ABK. Of course. Overwatch can always use more cars and robots. Moroccan hero would be cool. Indeed. Hi, Master Ian Gamer. How are you? I am doing fine today. This past week was not great for me, but things are getting better, and I'm back to streaming, which is nice, even though I'm not actually playing a match yet, but, you know, we'll get there. A lot of things to talk about, so I don't want to be distracted dying on you know, Parisio. Blizzard shows mini series hides whole show behind Battle Pass. I'm obviously the most precious. Wow, Kiriko is on point with that one. Twenty dollar super chat from Tristavision. Thank you, thank you so much, man. So I thought of this while six v six was relevant, but I'll pitch it now. What about a support where the only way to heal was to instantly heal someone to full HP on a four second cooldown? but they had to be next to them to use it. So you're talking about like a close proximity type thing. Hmm. Maybe if, if, if it's a hero, that's kind of like, I guess like Kiriko would actually kind of work with like her teleport mechanic, where it's a character that like darts around to different characters and say, like, you get a full heal. And then they can like dart over to somebody else. You get a full heal. Maybe, maybe some sort of mechanic like that. You know, there'd be have to a lot of be like a ton of like mechanic balancing and tweaking and stuff to make it work, but like that would be kind of. I mean, I guess Lucio is kind of like that, but he's like a, a over time heal, even if he does have to get close to people. So that's different, but I don't know. Interesting idea, a support that has to sort of like piggyback off characters in a sense because they have to be right on them to heal. But thank you for the super chat, both Tristavision and Proto. Appreciate it. I'm genuinely shocked that we haven't gotten a Talon Flamethrower hero to go up against May. Yeah, I think they're scared of adding a f f fully fire-based hero. But hopefully someday. Kiriko knowing the history would make Hanzo's development way too out in the open and on the nose. Without it, he can adapt to the attitudes he couldn't abide with Genji on his own. Yeah. Still need an Italian hero? It's true. Did I see the Jared Emong interview? Uh, I didn't watch it, but I watched like or I like looked at like a breakdown basically of the stuff talked about in it. One of the gladiator bots would work. <laughs> I'm telling you, Zephyrus. Zephyrus should be a hero. Hey, thanks again, Tristavision. Another five dollar super chat from Tristavision. Thank you so much. Actually. They have an ability where they link to someone and that one character can TP to them whenever they want, like Sim TP. Sorry, I like donating. I, you don't have to apologize for that, Tristavision. <laughs> you never have to apologize for that. I mega appreciate it. Okay, so yeah, um, there's like a League of Legends character I've seen people bring up that it's like they latch on to someone and like support them that sort of way. I think I'm getting the gist of how that character works. So you're saying something like that. And they would have to be able to swap who they're attached to in Overwatch, because otherwise you'd want to be able to heal one person, and I don't think that would be very effective. Uh, maybe. <clears throat> I don't know how much people would like playing a hero in Overwatch that doesn't have agency of being able to move around on its own. So maybe if it was like 
Imagine Wrecking Ball. You're playing as Hammond, but he doesn't have a mech. He just grabs onto the back of whoever hero is there and just, like, heals them by hitting them with a little wrench or something. And then he needs to go to a different character. He can jump off. Maybe he has, like, a little wingsuit. So he can, like, jump up and then, like, glide a little ways to help mobility, you know, get across. And then he could scurry along the ground, latch onto the other person and start hitting him with the wrench. Maybe it'd be something like that. There you go. Another animal from Horizon. A flying squirrel. A hyper-intelligent flying squirrel. That's what it would be. Yumi is a hat character who sits on people, yes? Okay, so that, that must be the character I'm thinking of then. I've been wanting Malga since he was shown off. Still crazy that he was supposed to be Sigma and still isn't added. Yeah, we could have had Malga. To be fair, I'm not complaining about Sigma, so... It was a fair trade in that, in that context of it. Remember when I said Junker Queen was going to be a support? Yeah, and I still think she would have made for a phenomenal support. I think w what they did end up doing with her and the direction they took her as a tank is great. She's probably one of my favorite tank heroes at this point in terms of, like, playing her. But, like, uh, th there is absolutely a reality where Junker Queen would have made for a support hero. Because she's she's the leader who stands in the background, or the, the like the back lines and screams at her team. She heals them by screaming. She has her own sort of tools to sort of deal damage when need be. But like ultimately, she's a leader, which is what a queen is. She leads her team. She doesn't get dirty herself because what queen would do that? I mean, I guess Junker Queen would, but you know, <laughs> specific character. Gener in general, a queen would hold back and bolster their team. And not do the fight in themselves, which is where I had the idea for Junker Queen being a support. But, of course, they didn't go in that direction. They could only link to one character at a time, and that character can TP to you whenever they want. Once they TP, the ability goes on cooldown, and then you can link with someone else after cooldown. Okay, so you're saying the other character teleports to the support. Oh, interesting. A teleport mechanic like that could be very strong in certain situations. Because, like, you put that on a Genji, he goes in there, gets down to one health, and teleports back. Like, that could be... That might be kind of frustrating to play against, unless there were good tools to counterplay it. That would be my concern, but... It's not an impossible mechanic. Hyper intelligent giant spider that latches onto heroes to heal them. <laughs> yeah, it can uh it can be genetically engineered so that its venom actually heals people instead of hurting people. And then it can just bite the person it latches to to heal them with healing venom. Imagine the queen shout healing people. I mean, yeah. I mean, already she kind of has that ability, but, like, if it was a straight-up healing, you shout over and over again, oh, that would be cool. Would love support to be on the front lines and heal their teammates? Her name's Brigitte! <laughs> it's what Brig was supposed to be until they decided not to make her a fun hero. <laughs> The new hero is from Peru, but nothing is wrong with saying she could have a Junker skin and have visited Junker Town in the past. I mean, yeah. Diva has a Junker skin, and for all we know, she's never been to Junker Town. Kind of sounds like a mild fielder soccer captain. <laughs> I, I, I guess you're talking about the support Junker Queen idea? Yeah, kind of, I guess. The Overwatch 1 drought was so rough. Yeah, it was.
And now we're already starting to see droughts in Overwatch 2. Ain't it great? Shock Blizzard hasn't given us an office style audio drama about day to day operations in Talon HQ. <laughs> uh, that, that, see, that's the sort of stuff that they need to be cranking out to really get people excited. <laughs> that sort of bizarro off the wall stuff. Like the dating sim. Lover Watch was perfect. Other than that, it didn't have all the characters one might want to be in it. But in concept, it was great. Thought of a mutated spider lady as a tank concept one time. Spiders are an interesting concept. Yeah, uh, like Recluse, the old concept. Or even Orisa. Orisa's original character design was much more spider-like. Thought Brig was bad season one through three, but now you're actually maining her. Yeah, I think she's decent at this point. Um, I just find her an absolute chore to play <laughs> which is a shame because i i love the idea of her character it's just not actually enjoyable when i play her it's like i feel like i'm not doing anything have i played diablo 4 no i have not never played any of the diablo games they don't really look that interesting to me honestly What is Overwatch's canon event for the memes? Well, maybe that'll be the animated series we get. <laughs> hey, Winged Mikey, how's it going? I'm doing fine today. Slumber was a support she could hack her teammates for benefiting effects, like hacking their health bar to make it go up. Yeah, I mean, originally Slumber was going to be a support who... Uh, what, what, let me think. What was it? It was she would hack the enemy and that would like reduce their damage output and healing received so that she like, in a like a really roundabout way, healed her team by reducing the damage output of the enemy, I think was how she originally worked from what the devs had said about support Sombra back in the day. Something along those lines. Brig is the most fun support in your opinion. Uh, I mean, if you enjoy her, all power to you, but, like, you just stand there swinging and, like, you can bop people with, like, the the whip, but... <sighs> I, I, I don't know. I, how could I ever play Brig when I have the option of playing either Zenyatta or Kiriko? Like, both of those are just so much more fun, in my opinion. Wonder what the Blizzard cinematic team is up to? Well, there's the Sojourn animated short, which will be coming out at the end of the month. And also this new miniseries. Going to do a Dead by Daylight stream when Nicolas Cage drops? Oh, of course I am. Actually, I, I've been really wanting to do a Dead by Daylight stream for a long time now because I've been playing the Singularity and he is my new favorite killer in Dead by Daylight. I love the Singularity, and I've been wanting to stream. I was going to stream Dead by Daylight tonight, but then the Overwatch miniseries got announced, and I was like, well, I should do a stream that's Overwatch-related, even though I haven't actually been playing Overwatch in this stream yet. Brigitte into the Brigverse. <laughs> Let's hope it doesn't turn out like the Warcraft movie. It's not nearly on that scale, so I don't think you have to worry about that. What do I think of the Overwatch animated series getting announced? I am cautiously excited. The animation style looks cheapo, which I'm not thrilled about, but I am excited to see a new type of like story presentation with like a mini series like that. So I think that's good, and hopefully they'll be. Hopefully it's good, and if it is good, hopefully they do more. Yes, I have. I have. For everybody asking, yes, I have seen the animated series trailer and all that. That's that's why I'm streaming tonight. If 
the Blizzard cinematic team was behind a series like an actual full series would genuinely be so fire. Our team carries. Oh, man. Like, <clears throat> a lot of people, I'm not saying you're necessarily underestimating it, but a lot of people underestimate just how much work goes into, like, the full-on, like, hero cinematics that Overwatch has. Like, those are huge projects. To do a full-length animated show of that style of, like, the animated shorts, that would be an immense amount of work. It would be amazing. Don't get me wrong. It would be amazing. But, like, that'd be a lot of work. I would not expect them to necessarily do something like that. Jeff about to make Overwatch great again. Me stopping him because it's a canon event. <laughs> oh no. Hello, Sanyu. Welcome to the stream. Kiriko Suzu should remove invincibility. It should be a pure cleanse. Hmm. Remove invincibility. Oh, I see what you mean. Remove invincibility from the Suzu. I thought you meant Suzu should cleanse, like, enemy invincibility. <laughs> like, use Suzu and enemy Zenyatta during Transcendence, and he can just take damage again. <laughs> I thought that's what you meant. Um, I don't know. I think the versatility of Suzu is kind of necessary for the ability to really achieve what it does. That being said, it is an incredibly strong ability. Thoughts on the possibility of another cinematic short at BlizzCon? I'd say it's pretty likely. I mean, heck, there better be a new cinematic at BlizzCon, given how much they're charging people to attend it. Jeez. It's my favorite Mythic skin, Sigma one. I love that Sigma skin. Hoping for the animations, like the cinematics, understand the animation is hard, but it'd be worth it. Yeah, I mean, it's it would be awesome. It would be so cool if they could pull off a full animated series like that. But it's that it's a very intensive animation style for that. And it would be a lot of work and it'd be extremely expensive and it would take a very long time. They could do it, theoretically. Would they do it? Probably not. The animation team and art team is carrying Overwatch. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it, it's, it 100% is. <laughs> Cinematic animation would be better as a movie for the big screen rather than a show. Yeah, I agree. Because a movie would collectively be smaller than a full series. Miniseries is definitely a test. They probably want to do something like Cyberpunk so they can make the game more popular and reach a wider audience. Yes, and Overwatch has existed for seven years now, and they should have done this years ago. Better late than never then, I guess, though. So. Can see something with slightly simpler art style a la Arcane. Yeah, maybe. Hello, Joshua. Welcome to the stream. Uh, you're an art geek, and the work put in is so massive, people really don't realize. It just would be so sick if it was actually doable. Yeah. It, yeah, all right. So, yeah, you you understand for sure. It is it is a lot of work. Like, <laughs> whenever I sort of look into, like, animation processes, I've never done anything animation-wise extensively like that. But whenever I look into it, I'm always like, how, how, do, how do humans actually pull this off? <laughs> it's so much work. Isn't the Sojourn cinematic meant to be out this season? Strange they haven't talked about it. Yeah, they've mentioned it. It's I believe it's toward the end of July. I don't remember the exact date. Gosh, so many comments, you guys. I guess this is what happens when I talk to chat instead of just playing the game. When it comes out, you're going to live stream the first animated short drop? Yes! 
assuming my internet is still working, um, what is it? Is it Thursday? Yeah, because the 6th and the 4th is Tuesday. Um, assuming my internet's not giving me trouble again on Thursday, uh, yes, I would love to do a watch party for the first animated episode. Sojourn Cinematic was teased over a year ago, and we barely heard anything about it until, like, last month. Yeah. I, I'm willing to bet the Sojourn animated short got delayed for some reason. And I think that's probably indicative. It, it, the, the Sojourn short likely ties in with Invasion, specifically. The season six. I'm betting the animated short got delayed because the PvE got delayed. Or, like, you know, the PvE story missions. Um, that's my theory. I don't know anything for sure, though, on that front. A full 2D series animated well would also take the same kind of work and time. Yeah, I mean, if you're talking about, like, old school, like proper hand-drawn animation but like that nobody does that anymore but like even a well-done one even one on par with like edge runners animation wise style of the animated series looks kind of similar to the doom fist release trailer yeah they both have that anime art style though admittedly the doom fist trailer was animated a bit better than what it looks like this series is going to be Chat is growing even more powerful. Watch party would be fun. Yeah. I wanted to do a watch party for whatever it was last Wednesday. Gosh, I don't even remember what happened last Wednesday that I streamed conked out on. Want a souvenir, a framed picture of Maximilian? Yeah, I wonder when we're going to start seeing more of Maximilian. Back in the day, it seemed like he was going to play a pretty substantial role in the PvE campaign. And we have yet to really see anything about him lately, so... I don't know, maybe he got... Maybe he got scrapped. Maybe he got retconned as a character. All that is hand-drawn to extents. 2D animation even now so takes absurd effort, even with the digital art. Yeah, I'm not saying 2D art is easy by any means. Like, I understand any kind of animation is intensive in the amount of work that goes into it. Um, but, like, nowadays they have a lot more digital tools to sort of aid in the effort of it. Animation is extensive and time-consuming and expensive and difficult, period. Yeah. Don't want to be that guy, but you wouldn't count the animated short for Sojourn as roadmap content, at least in the playable sense. They just needed to fill the Season 5 roadmap more. Yeah, I mean... It's, I mean, yeah, it's not gameplay content, it's story content, which is still content, but not quite the same, you know? Junkrat or Moira, who would you let watch your kids? You've asked that before. You've asked that question before on my stream. Uh, and I said Junkrat, <laughs> I think was my answer. Is there a chance Sojourn gets a Mythic, maybe even though she's getting an MVP skin? I don't think Sojourn's getting a Mythic at this point, because she's getting the MVP skin. She's also getting a Legendary skin with Season 6 as part of the like PvE stuff. I, I don't think she's going to be getting a Mythic this season, or like, you know, Season 6. 
maybe seven and beyond, but not this time. Do I think the new hero has any connections to hard light? It's possible. Um, I don't know how, like, her being Peruvian will necessarily connect with it, though. I don't know. I mean, it's possible. I don't think we necessarily have enough evidence to say definitively one way or the other. Want more Sanjay stuff? He ties into so many characters that are otherwise isolated. Yes. Yeah, that is a good point that he does tie to isolated characters. Yeah, Sanjay just seems so cool. Like, just the the clinical pragmatist, where it's like, is he evil? Or is he just incredibly pragmatic? <laughs> Are those even different? <laughs> oh, he seems like a character with so much cool character potential. But I feel like they're never going to do anything with him at this point. Sanjay should have been released before Life Weaver. They need to keep tension in Vishkar. I think there's a different timeline where Life Weaver was Sanjay. Where rather than going with like the 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 Biolite flower power route for Life Weaver, they went something much more cold and clinical, but had like the same abilities basically. And they were for Sanjay. I think that's a very realistic possibility. And I almost wouldn't be surprised if Life Weaver originated as a concept for Sanjay internally, that they then just created a new original character for, because they're like, oh, we want to go this direction, and that doesn't fit Sanjay's personality. I could see that having happened. Who do I think the next Mythic will be for, given the theory that the next theme is Null Sector? Uh, it could be Ramatra if they go for something in that sort of vein. Otherwise, it could be another Omnic character. It could be Bastion, for all we know, getting some weird Null Sector type thing. Like, Bastion already has a Null Sector skin, but it could be, like, a different type of Null Sector skin, or one more broadly tied to Invasion, or Zenyatta might get something along those lines. The pragmatism analysis is so on brand for Overwatch 2. Yes. Yeah, it, it would be akin to, like, Doomfist's whole philosophy, where it's like, this dude's evil, but, like, you see where he's coming from, and it's like, all right, you're not just, like, a, you're not just a maniacal buffoon. Like, <laughs> you're aiming for something specific. It's very questionable whether one should aim for that, and certainly in the way that you're aiming for it. But, like, that's why I like Doomfist. He has a really cool ideology, even if it's pretty abhorrent. <laughs> Cassidy should just get a hard light lasso. <laughs> oh, no, there you go. Scrap the grenade entirely. Give him a hard light lasso. Moira, the most pragmatic. Moira is very pragmatic, but in, like, not to the same extent Sanjay is. Moira visibly takes some sort of pride or satisfaction in her experiments. Like, just the way she talks, the way she acts, she enjoys doing the unethical things she does. There may be an underlying, like, level of pragmatism, which is why she does it, but she takes pleasure in it. Sanjay is 100% cold clinical. He is a human machine who operates and does whatever needs to be done to suit his utilitarian ideologies. <laughs> he takes no pleasure in what he does. But pleasure is irrelevant because it serves the greater good under his understanding of greater good. And, like, I love how monstrous it is because it's not even evil. It's just cold, clinical, and practical. And it's like, 
It's terrifying. It is terrifying, but it is so cool. <laughs> The new hero is a flashbang. It'd be so evil and funny to see how everyone screams about it. Yeah, I don't think it would go over very well. What is hard light? Uh, it's the technology Symmetra and to an extent Life Weaver uses to build physical structures out of light. We don't really know too much about the science behind it, but it's magic science type stuff, so, you know. Sanjay sounds like the one hero who doesn't move a lot. Um, I mean, yeah, he's absolutely not the sort of person that directly gets his own hands dirty. Like, there's even an argument for him being a support along the lines of what my original Junker Queen support concept was, where it's like, he holds back and sort of enables the rest of his team to do things. And like Maximilian, in a sense, could even work as a support hero like that, too. But overall, I, I don't know if Sanjay would ever be a hero. Certainly at this point, if, if Life Weaver wasn't Sanjay, I feel like we're never going to see Sanjay at this point. So he's Zuckerberg. <laughs> he's Zuckerberg minus the catastrophic attempts to appear human. <laughs> he doesn't even try that. <laughs> Sanjay is just past any sort of facade human activities. <laughs> How is it that Roadhog can hook Reinhardt out of a charge? Not only is Ryan moving at the speed of a minivan, he's encased in thick steel armor. Explain, Overwatch. Um, Roadhog has the density of a small neutron star. And his chain hook is made out of futuristic super carbon fiber. That's how he does it. Okay. It's it's been wow, it has been an hour since I started this stream. Okay. Let's start actually playing. <laughs> that was a nice fun chat talking about things, but I think I, I I should jump into a match at long last. That way I'll get at least some interest in the replay on this stream. People will click on it. Oh look, a replay from Master Ian Gamer's stream. Oh, it's an hour of him talking with a blank screen. Wow. <laughs> Everyone's going to convince themselves that Malga is the season 8 tank hero and is going to be some dude we've never heard of. Honestly, there's a very good chance that happens. There is a very good chance that ends up happening. An hour of Q&A. Yeah, there you go. Not much of a Q&A, but... Well, I guess you guys are, like, saying things and I'm sort of responding to them. Let's get the ram on. Do ever get people talking in game how they can't tell the difference between a friendly or enemy life weaver ult? No, I don't. I've never had trouble. I mean, they look very different. One's red, the other one's like whitish yellow. No, it's him. They tease Samoa. It's Malga for sure this time. Yeah, it, it could so easily be a misdirect. Because it's like, oh, the, the Peru poster turned out to be the new support hero. The Samoa poster must be the new tank hero. And then they're like, psych, you got excited for Malga again for nothing.
Got no mercy, kill him. <laughs> you thought it was Malga, but it was me, Maximilian. <laughs> we Maximilian in a mech. <laughs> Watch it be Mauga's sister or something as the next tank hero. That would just be insulting if they did that. <laughs> what do I like to play outside of Overwatch? Uh, Dead by Daylight. I've been playing a lot of Dead by Daylight recently because Singularity is fun. <laughs> Um, I play a lot of, like, single-player type games as well. Like, I don't know, like... Uh, another game I've been playing recently is... Surviving Mars. The, like, colony-building sim. That's a game I quite enjoy. I, I, I go back to that game every now and again. If any hero were to be reworked into a different role that they are right now, what would it be? Who would it be? Uh, May is a tank. I don't think any hero should be reworked to a different role, but... I could see May. Especially if they really want to commit to this whole crowd control direction. Japanese hero, also part of the Shimada family, Father Shimada, the next Reinhardt who deflects three times as much as Genji. Yeah. <laughs> no, thank you. Beating my ass. They have superior numbers. Imagine a crossbow hero. <laughs> yeah, I could, I mean, a crossbow could easily just be, like, a style. Where it behaves like a rifle would, but it's just a crossbow. So that it's a bit more different. Passive ability, manly pose. <laughs> He's so manly. <laughs> Wonder if why some people find Overwatch hard to understand is because of sensory overload. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, there can be a lot going on at times in this game, and I get that. Thank you, Grandma. What? Did not realize a soldier was up there. Already hearing fireworks for the 4th of July? Yeah, people like to get started early, depending on where you live. 
All these Aussie heroes and no boomerangs. Yeah, Eevee, you're right. Queen has a boomerang, technically. Effectively, it's a boomerang. I'm kind of surprised none of her skins, like, actually make the knife look like a boomerang. Like, that's really weird that she doesn't have any like that. You want that ram skin, but you don't really like his nemesis form. I I think it's such a cool concept. A robot character buffing himself with like pseudo-human bioengineered limbs. <laughs> it's like what? It's just like inverted mech suit. <laughs> it's it, it it's so cool. The only thing I don't like about it is the long fingernails, because those are gross, but <laughs> But at least it fits the monstrous theme of it. <laughs> Having two Life Weaver and Ram ults going off at once is an experience. It is. Ah, yes, finally, back to the peninsula. It's been too long. Imagine streaming and lighting up fireworks on the 4th. Yeah, I mean, for all I know, people outside my house might start shooting off fireworks. Just another day in the office. I don't know that I'll necessarily be streaming on the 4th of July. Probably not, because I'll probably be doing other things that day, but we'll see. Look at May as a tank lost in the DPS section. I mean, yeah, that's basically what she is. Dang it. Isn't there a hero concept with bigger arms like Ramatra? Yes. Um, maybe this is what you're referring to. There was a concept, a fan-made concept for a hero back within like the first year or two of Overwatch coming out as a game. Overwatch 1, not Overwatch 2. I can't remember the name of the character, but it effectively just was what Ramatra is now. It was an Omnic monk with ties to Shambhali and Zenyatta, who had these, like, big, like, exo-arms that would come out for, like, one of its abilities and would punch things. Yeah. Kind of strange. <laughs> Did Blizzard steal the idea? Maybe. All right, now this is an instance of, uh... Maybe there's a bit too much going on. <laughs> Need an entire squad of skins for the hazmat theme? Yes, please. I love hazmat designs. Just any sort of, like, hazardous environment type suits are just so cool to me. 
whether it's like a space suit, a deep sea like diving suit, like a toxic resistance suit, anything like that is just so cool. Oh, thank you, Life Weaver. <laughs> What ability ult do you think uh, would I add to the game that I think would be amazing, but the rest of the community might hate? Uh, flamethrower. Yeah, I, I think a flamethrower would be so cool, but I think there would be a lot of people who'd be like, No, I hate damage over time. It's annoying. It's overpowered. Reaper also has the Plague Doctor skin, doesn't he? Yeah, but it's more of like a... Like a fantasy-style Plague Doctor. Where it's like... I mean, maybe not fantasy, because, you know, it's based off of, like, actual historical Plague Doctors. But it's like a historical, fantasy, medieval-inspired Plague Doctor. As opposed to, like, a chemical warfare <laughs> hazmat Plague Doctor. Need construction squad skins? Yes. Want a hero that's like a storm? Yeah, storm-based powers could be an interesting one. Especially now that they're adding a sun-based hero. With his next support. I could see more storm-based theming for a character. Earthquake hero. This is Reinhardt, Earth Shattering. A wolf based hero? <sighs> Isn't it already bad enough having a fox based hero? Do we really need a wolf one too? Surprising amount of archetypes missing in the elemental vein. Yeah. I mean, I don't think it's really... I don't think the Overwatch, like, character designers really try that hard to make, like, specifically themed characters. It's not like, oh, this is the water hero, this is the fire hero. They seem to try to be a bit more nuanced and, like, generalized, in a sense, but... I mean, I guess there's, like, Mei, who's this ice-themed... Okay, I am just <laughs> soaking in all the damage. I got the Zen.
can actually look for the poster right now. Oh, the Samoan poster? Uh, it's on the laboratory's map, it's not on this one. And I think I was in the wrong spawn room for it previous round. Yeah, I'm getting lasered. <laughs> That's the zen. Natural disaster based hero. I mean, an apocalypse based hero. Wait, that's just Roadhog. Yeah, their Zen was doing work. <laughs> Being a junk rat main good? I don't know, is it? Oh hey Kiriko, welcome to chat. Uh, good good to see you. Yeah. Welcome. Ian, what's your favorite three heroes? Ooh, favorite three. That's a good question. The wrecking ball would certainly be up there. Oh man, who would be after wrecking ball? That's tough. If it comes to tank heroes specifically... Tank hero-wise, would be Wrecking Ball, and then Ramatra, Sigma, Junker Queen. I, I don't know which of those... which of these three would fit it into the two after Wrecking Ball. If it was top four, it'd be those four, flat out, but like... Oh man, that, that's that's hard to narrow it down to three for me. Maybe Junker Queen I would cut, and it would be Wrecking Ball, Sigma, Ramatra. But I really like playing Junker Queen, so. Your favorite is Baptiste, Diva, and Reinhardt. It's a nice pick. <laughs> I've actually been playing a bit more Diva recently. She's a tanker I haven't played much in a while. What change do I think they're doing to Zen the devs are talking about? Well, I'm pretty sure they said the Discord orb was being tweaked. I don't know if they're going to do much beyond that. A magic-based hero? Yeah, Kiriko's kind of already that. <laughs> No, I, I definitely agree, Confused Cabal. There has been a shift towards, like, fantasy and magic over the sci-fi angle. Which I don't really like that much. I don't think they've crossed any lines thus far in terms of, like, oh, that's too fantasy-based. Like, Kiriko's definitely the most fantasy they've done, but even Kiriko, I think, is fine enough. Hmm... We need a support hero that is a double agent who's really bad at their job and is trying to sabotage his team, but only ends up helping them. Wow, what an idea for a character. That's like something you'd expect out of TF2. <laughs> I love that idea. It's so stupid, but like hilarious at the same time. I would love if they did something like that. I don't know if they ever would, but it would be so funny. <laughs> Any characters that are favorites character-wise, excluding how they play? Um, hmm. I mean, like, yes. I really like Hanzo and Genji in terms of their characters, but I don't enjoy playing either of them. Mainly because I'm just really bad at both of them, but... Yeah, I would say Hanzo and Genji are the characters that, story-wise, I really like them, but... Gameplay-wise, I'm like, eh, I'll play somebody else.
keep getting close to plat five and then having your <laughs> match ruined by Hammond players? I feel like that's a targeted comment right there. Your trash, your top three are Kiriko, Kiriko, and Kiriko on her bike. Yeah, why am I not surprised? Dang it. Stuck on the stupid van. Isn't double agent concept life weaver? Mm, I don't know if I'd define him as that specifically. The best ideas always start out as dumb ideas. <laughs> Dumb ideas do make for some of the best ideas, I'll give you that. Yesterday you teleported off the map thanks to Hammond. Oh wait, was that your clip that I saw posted on the server? <laughs> of you teleporting to the wrecking ball and just falling? That was hilarious. <laughs> Get off my truck. Yeah, it's probably a preemptive uh, use of my ult there, but it's all good. Whoops. <laughs> I meant to put that up here. Oh, God. Thoughts on Halo Infinite hazmat armor? Uh, I've not seen it. I've never played Halo Infinite, and I'm not really into... Halo is like a franchise, so I'm, I'm not familiar with it. Is Silver 4 good? Uh, sure! Yeah, Silver 4 is great. Why, are you Silver 4? Congrats if you are. Why is your gun shaking? Oh, hey, Rhino. How's it going? Yeah, it's that bug. I think it's been around for a while where Torb's gun will just sort of quiver like that. I don't remember what causes it. I'm on the fire! You got an all headshots play with Kiriko? Nice! Silver 4 in chat, you're honored. Yeah, it's pretty impressive, man. Congrats. Oh, Rhino, you just found out about the uh, animated series? <laughs> yeah, exciting. I am hoping it's good. Suffer my jiggle gun. Ha ha ha. It is funny how it quivers like that. Where are they? <laughs> We're just like sitting here. Okay, yeah, they are all coming up there. For a reason. My tower. Happy that we're getting more lore. Yeah, it's been a long time coming. You get bullied by Hammond players when you play as Kiriko? Yeah, it's probably me. Uh, I'm not sorry. Oh god, oh god. Darn. Guess you can learn even at this age. Quiver with fear, exactly. Jiggle gun turns enemies to jelly. Mm, but only some enemies. <laughs> only half of them. No! I wanted her dead. <laughs> Am I in competitive? Nope! This is quick play! Why do you think I'm playing Torbjorn? 
I gotta play Dorb and Calm. Oh, she's so low. Look how quickly tanks get healed in this game. That Zarya was one, a second later she's full. Viva la... I feel like I shouldn't finish saying that, because I might say something horrible. <laughs> Thoughts on new burst DPS Lifeweaver? Uh, I, I don't think I really have thoughts on Life Weaver at this point. Did I win or lose? I won. Yuriko doesn't have a bike. It's not a canon event. Yeah, her not having a bike, but thinking she does, is the canon event. Sorry, Prods. I don't just friend people from chat. Only we had a double agent support character. Oh, hi, Sanjay. What are you doing? Collecting dust on a corner? Good for you. I don't think Sanjay would make for a good double agent character. It would undermine how cool he already is as, like, the the clinical pragmatist I was talking about earlier. Your cannon event is a delusion. Yeah, something along those lines. Yeah, Queen ain't good against that ult. <laughs> Favorite map since Overwatch 2? Hmm. I quite like this one. Shambali Monastery. I don't know if I'd say it's my favorite. I don't know, it's kind of hard to say. Honestly, Esperanka is kind of... Like, that one's really fun for a push map, but I also do like Coliseo. I don't know. I don't know if which particular favorite map is mine. Do I have almost every Overwatch skin? I did before Overwatch 2! <laughs> All of Overwatch is the figment of Hammond's imagination. Yeah, yeah. I'd believe it. Speaking of favorite maps, music wise, I love New Queen Street's theme. It's so cool. <laughs> It's like this pseudo, like, futuristic beat. Oh, it's so good, so good. So good. Midtown is the best. Fight you. I don't have to. I think you just fought yourself by calling it Midtown. Get it? Ah ha 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 ha. Favorite music theme is Midtown. It is really good. Yeah, I'll say the music on Midtown is really good. Flexing ham and skins? Maybe I am. Whoops! <laughs> Didn't see that trap. <laughs> if you're not Crab Hammond, what are you doing in your life? Eh, don't knock Junker Hammond. Even if it is an Overwatch 1 skin, it can compete. The Crab is good, but it's not om om omniscient, omnipresent. It's not his only goods again. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say.
What the heck was that? Something pulled me down. Oh no, oh no, no, no. Yeah. Thank you, Life Weaver! <laughs> Did I do that? <laughs> Cries and high baller Hammond. That's also a great skin. And it's only an epic. Well, high roller, not baller, but. This robot has barely moved at all. <laughs> I don't know when I've last seen a this balanced bush match. Come on, we got it, we got it, we got it. Best Overwatch 2 skin overall? Hmm. It's always hard to try to pick out just a singular best skin. Like, maybe I could say a best skin for a given hero, but not flat out. I heard you put down that trap, junk rat. You ain't gonna fool me twice. Oh god. Oh, it didn't even matter. <laughs> Can I give you some tips on playing Wrecking Ball specifically? Or like tips on like uh other things? On Wrecking Ball, uh never stop moving. That's a simple one. Learn good grapple spots. Get used to his cooldowns, because knowing when you can pile drive is big for being able to consistently do damage. Ooh, know where health packs are. That's also a really big thing for Wrecking Ball. Reaper. Just make my minds obsolete, why don't you? Don't care for Numbani as much as the other hybrid maps? Yeah, I don't know what it is about Numbani, but ever since Overwatch 2, I feel like I haven't liked playing on Numbani. I never had a problem with it in Overwatch 1, but something about it. Maybe it's because they fixed the airport. This doesn't feel the same anymore. Jeez, neither side has gotten to the midpoint yet. This is the most balanced push match I've played in ages. <laughs> Don't I have an Overwatch video on giving Hammond tips? I do! Yeah, one which uh, Blizzard themselves actually commissioned from me, which is a really interesting thing to get to do. And then everyone got mad, because they're like, why are you having this plat schmuck do a video about Wrecking Ball? Why haven't you gotten, like, some Grandmaster player? And I was like, I, that they asked me to do it. <laughs> And then Blizzard never asked me to do anything ever again. Oh, sorry, Reaper. Did you need that? <laughs> I just killed our Reaper. The Wrecking Ball experience, killing your friends.
Oh gosh. Oh, what the? Ah. Oh, panicked. I should have released my grapple. Nice try, Mercy. How long ago was the ball tips video? Oh, that was at least a few years ago. I want to say that was 2019? Maybe it was more recent than that. I don't remember. Would MI the G ever be down to remake the Wrecking Ball Tips and Tricks video? Uh, maybe. I'll have to. I'll have to ask him. I know he's pretty busy these days with his uh, with his own career, but yeah, may maybe he'd be interested. What do I expect from the new hero? Uh, Gameplay-wise, they're going to have a sword, gun type weapon. By the looks of it, they're going to have light-based abilities. They're going to be Peruvian, and they've got some connection to some weird light infusion machine, which maybe was an involuntary thing on their part. I don't know. It's hard to say at this point. It, it would be interesting if we get another, like, hero with, like, catastrophe-type powers, like Sigma, where it's like, he has his gravity powers because of an accident with the gravity experiment. If this new Peruvian hero has her light powers because of some weird experiment she was in that sort of went awry, it'd be interesting to see another character like that. I think the Ball Tips video was 2021. Really? That recent? I mean, maybe. I don't really remember, but I didn't think it was that recent. What? How did there... Why was there a trap there? <laughs> we need more heroes with guns. There's been a lack of those lately. That is a very good point. Life Weaver, save me! No! <laughs> Curse you, Junkrat! Yeah, this junk rat knows how to place his traps. I appreciate that. I appreciate it in terms of, like, I respect that he's good at what he's doing. I don't appreciate it in that I keep getting stuck in them. <laughs> ha. All right, now don't touch it. Don't touch it. We don't want him getting close. Mercy, get off that thing. See what I think you're a trap that time. Mmm, you dare to challenge me on ball? Don't you know that Blizzard paid me to make a video about Wrecking Ball? <laughs> That's what you get. Ooh -hoo -hoo. Been trying to budget on Overwatch 2 skins. I've been deciding between Cleric, Lifeweaver, Aztec, Sombra. Street Runner, Genji, Lifeguard, Mercy, Plague, Moira. Is Moira worth it? Or did I just get the icon? I got the skin as well, because I think it is her best skin. It, it's certainly my favorite Moira skin. Eh, other people would disagree in terms of taste. Oh no, not me killing the Reaper! <laughs> well, at least we still won. Um, I would say the Plague 
Doctor skin for Moira is definitely worth getting. Uh, Lifeguard Mercy is also probably my favorite Mercy skin that she has. So both of those are pretty good. Cleric Life Weaver is also the best Life Weaver skin that he has. So it's 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 a tough season in terms of budgeting on skins. Uh, Aztec Sombra, are you talking about the Sombra one specifically or the new Reaper one? Maybe you're talking about the older Sombra one. Um, I really like the new Reaper Aztec skin as well, but I don't think that's his best skin. So if I were to, if that was in the equation, I'd budget on that one maybe. But there's a lot of good skins this season. A lot of good ones. Zenyatta rework. We gave him a gun. <laughs> yeah, they just replaced his orbs with guns. <laughs> Now he throws guns at people. What do you think is the most disliked hero main? Ooh, I mean Hanzo back in the day, but like, I don't, I don't know. What is a hated type of main these days? I mean, maybe ball mains. I feel like people don't like them very much. I don't know if they'd be the most hated though. Do I have all the golden guns? No, I have all the tank golden guns and a few others. Life Weaver will get better skins in the future. Probably, but for now, uh, Cleric is easily my favorite Life Weaver skin. Because it's genuinely just really cool looking. And I'm not even like super big into the fantasy like aesthetic, typically. But I think that one just looks really cool. I like what they did with his eyes. Making him almost look like maybe he's evil. <laughs> maybe not. Mind me, just popping in and out. Why are you guys not pushing? It's still a ram over here. What? This junk red isn't as good. He hasn't trapped me once yet. can't get yourself to call him Life Weaver anymore. He's Wife Weaver, unironically. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, Life Weaver is still kind of a mouthful to say. It, it doesn't feel right to call him just like Weave or just like anything like that. I don't know. I think I've said Life Weaver enough at this point that I'm basically used to it, but... Oh, all my friends are dead. How unfortunate. Hey, he trapped me. You did it, Junk Rat. You finally did it. You're hyped to get a Null Sector Zenyatta skin next season? If he gets one, that would be pretty cool. Hog main seemed pretty universally hated. Yes, but there aren't very many of them at the moment, because Hog is currently garbage, so... Balls working here. I feel like I can't make a dent in them. Probably doesn't help that we're losing people, but you know. Oh, 
All My Friends Are Dead was a legit children's book about dinosaur extinction you found several years ago? Huh. Is that in the similar vein as the book Go the F to Sleep? <laughs> if you're familiar with that. Of course, it's not actually F in the title of the book, but you know. Did it, I killed the tree. Totally didn't just time out on its own or anything like that while my friends died to Zarya. <laughs> no, that didn't happen. You need anime Zenyatta backstory so hard. Give the man some lore. He, he has lore at this point. But yes, he could use the cinematic. We did it. <sighs> Training bot, new hero? No, never. It'll never happen. Zen could well feature in Genesis at least. Oh, I could easily see him getting at least a cameo with whatever happens with Aurora. Like, I could imagine at, like, the end, they'll have something where it's, like, all the Omnics are waking up and, like, one of them they focus on is, like, hinted to be Zenyatta or something like that. Have you noticed that everyone is leaving games a lot more recently? Yes, I have noticed that. It's really annoying, and I've definitely noticed it's happening a lot lately. I wonder why. Give up, D.Va. I'm the better version of you. Rocking Ball is just a better version of D.Va. Oh no, no! Oh god. Just because you killed me once doesn't mean I'm not better. How hard is endorsement level 5? Um... Just play support and be really good at either Ana or Mercy, and you'll get support five or endorsement five. Don't mind me. I'm just overextending while my team's trying to respawn. Junk rats. Real bear trap on my side, if you know what I mean. If I could include myself as a character in the Overwatch universe, what would I be? I would be an Omnic, and I don't know what I would do. <laughs> Probably nothing, just like in real life. <laughs> no, I kind of threw that. Eh, I mean, it didn't help that we were constantly losing people, but... No 
that was one of the strangest play of the games I've seen in a long time. <laughs> Is Antarctic Peninsula bugged at the moment? Um, I mean, it just came back from being bugged. They just added it back in. Maybe there's a new bug. Not that I've heard of, I don't think. I don't know. Omnic Gamer Streamer. Yeah. Part of you hopes they return or they retcon Kiriko's backstory a little so she can be a little more interesting. How about a lot more interesting? Got it. <sighs> I typically hate it when they retcon things because it's it's, uh, it's just annoying. But like Kiriko is one instance where I'd like, please retcon her. I don't I don't care about how horrible it is to retcon things. Just make Kiriko a good character. That's all I want. <laughs> She's fun to play, but she has a garbage character. Why can't she just be a good character? I would love if they retconned her. Back to ball. Collab with D.Va, but she'd trash talk you. <laughs> oh man, who would I collab with if I was like in the Overwatch universe as like a content creator? I mean, I'd want to collab with Wrecking Ball, but my character would be a reoccurring antagonist against Kiriko. <laughs> what, would I just be part of the Hashimoto? <laughs> I show up every now and again just to get my ass kicked by this stupid fox girl. <laughs> In your head canon, Ian's a popular Omnic news reporter. <laughs> I mean, maybe. Something along those lines. Another Junkrat? Why? <laughs> What's with all the Junkrats today? Oh! Ooh, 12 HP and a prayer! <laughs> oh, that the traps! Be like D.Va, but I live stream the Omnic World Takeover instead of being a superhero. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'm D.Va's rival. <laughs> Hammond would swear on stream. Dude, Hammond would get canceled so quickly. You don't even understand. <laughs> Oh my god, mercies never die. Just hit the skybox there. That was jarring. <laughs> I love grappling enemy life weaver pedal platforms.
Hmm. You don't feel like Kiriko embodies the chaotic and tricksy nature of the original Kitsune? Yeah, she's a bit... She's a bit too much of just a brat. <laughs> She would be better if she was more trickstery instead of just obnoxious. Master Ian, what makes you master? <laughs> Good question, my friend. I wish I knew. <laughs> damage boost, did that make sense? I like to imagine Hammond frequently says every swear and slur under the sun, we just can't understand it. That's not even you imagining it, that's literally what he does. <laughs> it's strongly implied by the mech's voice lines that he frequently says, like, profane things that cannot be repeated by the mech. <laughs> Anyone used to watch Dopa 2 Overwatch animations? Is it Dopa 2 or Dopa 2? I never knew how to pronounce it. But yes, I remember those. Those were great. Omnic Ian is a Talon agent. How else would they recruit so many goons? What? I ain't affiliated with Talon. What are you what, 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 what are you trying to say there, buddy old pal? My throne is where I say it is. <sighs> the mother's work is never done. Sure. Is Hammond's mech sentient? No, not in the same way as an Omnic. Um, it was described as having an advanced AI, but it's not like sentient in its own right. It's like chat GPT version 20 running in a giant wrecking ball. The mech built itself a profanity filter, <laughs> just so it doesn't have to repeat the things Hammond says. <laughs> As Omniki and what are your opinions on the Junkertown scrapyard? Uh, my producers have advised me not to comment on that. <laughs> The mech is basically just a translator. I mean, yes. I mean, that's what we see it mainly doing. Presumably, it also plays some role in, like, the operations of the mech itself. It's not just a vocal translator. And who knows? Maybe it does other things. Wait, they just now capped it. Way to go, enemy team. Or 
mercy! Mer no! Hey, Proto, welcome back. Happy Friday, indeed! Hammond speaks mech sweat. <laughs> oh god, I can't repeat that. We're keen for New Junk City or Suravasa. Oh, definitely New Junk City. I love me some Junker Town. Oh, I just remembered. Um, for any of you who are moderators or channel members in the chat, you may have noticed I added some new emotes. Well, technically I replaced old emotes, but new ones which hopefully would be more interesting to you all. So Proto or Tris Division, if you're still here, or EV, if you guys want to show those off to people, feel free. I think moderators have access to emotes. I don't see why they wouldn't. Yes, you may recognize them. They are the ones from my Discord server, but I figured they'd be well at home here as well. Apparently Surabas is part of Aurora's lore. Yeah, well that's the setting for uh, Stone by Stone, the short story. With Symmetra and Zenyatta. I don't remember to what extent it ties beyond that. Oh dear, I've let my team die. You notice at the end of my videos, this says I talk as a channel member. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I talk used to show up in the stream chats for a while. Yeah, he's a member. He's a pretty cool guy. I know there's quite a few people here who watch his stuff as well. What? I'm gonna kill you, Frank! <laughs> Screw you! <laughs> no that brig messed up my ult. <laughs> right. Ian, would you cosplay Kiriko? Ugh. Not willingly. Last week you ordered yourself a Kiriko t-shirt. Oh, I'm sorry, my friend. What a poor, what a poor purchase. One, zero. <laughs> Get down, Mr. President Brig. <laughs> How much for the Kiriko cosplay? Ugh, more than you guys could ever afford. Three, two, one. Round. You and me. Gotcha. 
You're now trying to picture Omnic Ian wearing Kiriko's outfit, but you can't. Good, because you shouldn't. <laughs> Stash, you did an Ash cosplay? Nice. Hashtag fund MIG Kiriko cosplay. No, no, no. Don't, don't, don't start that proto. You're gonna get something horrible going, and I want no part of it. since everyone's got a price. Yeah, and you can't match it, so don't even think about it. How much for the Wrecking Ball cosplay? <laughs> uh, a hell of a lot less than the Kiriko one, I'll say that. <laughs> Technically, there's already been uh, Wrecking Ball cosplay of me in terms of like artwork. A few years ago, someone did like an MIG hamster wrecking ball concept image. It was pretty cool. I'll have to find it. I have it somewhere saved in my hard drive. Don't get any ideas about Kiriko artwork because of that. I don't want to hear anything about it. That's why I like Junker Queen. <laughs> I would be the ball. <laughs> yes, the boopers do want me dead. That Lucio is the brig from last time, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> they are not letting me have a good time. When we're on our bike, we're all cosplaying Kiri. I, no. <laughs> you can't just extend that to every instance of anyone ever riding a bike. <laughs> See ya, Junkrat! <laughs> Alright, now to kill the fox, or she'll run away. No Kitsune for today. For real, who would you cosplay? That is a good question. I'm not much of a cosplayer, you know? What about the widow, however it's pronounced, the bikini cosplay? Yeah, no, don't even think about it. Hello, Alonzo. Happy Friday to you, too. Welcome to the stream. Ah, thank you, Proto, for posting that. Assuming you posted the right thing. Let me, let me, let me, let me actually look at this. Make sure you didn't post something profane. Yeah, that's the one. Yep, wow, 20k subs! That was when they did it. Ah, oh, that is such a cool piece of artwork. 
<laughs> people should do fan art more often. I think that would be cool. <laughs> wow, support. Been a while since I played support. Ah, it's a backfill. That explains it. Still very excited because of the Easter eggs on Coliseo. You're talking about, uh... Hold up. Zephyrus? Yeah. Oh god, what did I teleport into? Yeah, Dorky's got some good art. I don't know whatever happened to them. They used to be kind of active in like my comments and stuff on my channel. I don't know if I've seen them in a while. But they did do that really cool Wrecking Ball <laughs> fan art, which I really like. How many of you were taught by your parents to ride a bike? I was. Can people like not ride bikes these days? Is that like a thing? I wouldn't be surprised if it's a thing. Zoomers can't ride bikes. Favorite character is the MIG guy. He's so very powerful. A special move is one of and the best in the game. And so he comes with these two ears and only takes actually to execute what is that like a copy pasta? What do you I don't understand. <laughs> Real gamers at Healies instead of bikes. Yeah. <laughs> Do I count as a zoomer at 23? Um, well, I guess it depends. You Wait, Trash, you had your birthday recently, right? Or am I thinking of somebody else who recently had their birthday? If you were born after the, after the turn of the century, that's what I consider a zoomer. Um, I think technically it extends like back to 95 by some metrics. I don't know. If you're 23, if you if you were born in or after the year 2000, I would say you're a Zoomer. My least favorite hero to play, gameplay wise, ooh, definitely one of the damage heroes. Maybe like Symmetra or Sombra. I really don't enjoy playing them. Well, let's play some Torbjorn. Wait, we're on attack. Well, still playing Torbjorn. Yep, that was you, Trash. Okay. May 25th, 2000. Yeah, so if you're born in 2000, I would say you're a Zoomer. Um, maybe, sir, I don't think anyone would say would disagree with being born in 2000 making you a Zoomer. If anything, they would say maybe if you're born before 2000, up to like 95, I've seen some people say, would still classify you as a Zoomer. But, yeah, it varies. You're 32 and never learned how to ride a bike. I don't know what to tell you, Caitlin, but uh, you're missing out on that childhood experience of riding down a street, falling over, scraping your knee and screaming while your dad tries to get you to shut up. It's a valuable part of most people's childhoods. Really not the same without it. Who is my least favorite of the new heroes? I assume you mean Overwatch 2 heroes? Uh, Sojourn. Just because I don't enjoy playing her, and I don't think she's interesting as a character either. Like, Life Weaver, at least, is kind of like it. He's, he feels more unique of a character, at the very least, compared to Sojourn. Even if I don't enjoy playing him. <clears throat> oh, 
Thank you, Turlet. You're doing my work for me. Bike riders unite. What's a Gen Z? Uh, a generation. Depending on when you were born, basically. Do I like roller coaster? Roller coasters? Like real roller coasters as opposed to like playing roller coaster tycoon? Uh, yeah, I do like roller coasters. It's been a while since I've been on one. I'm, I don't usually go to like amusement parks or things like that. I've never been huge into those, but I enjoy roller coasters. They're fun. read Sojourn's novel, they fleshed out her character a lot more. I started reading it, um, and I, I could not get into it. I didn't like the prose. It, it, it felt like one of those things that was written just to sort of like serve a function, as opposed to actually tell an engaging story. And I was like, uh, I don't care enough about Sojourn to read this. <laughs> just look up on the Wikipedia any info I need to know. Wife puller. Yeah, I, mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Life Weaver pulled someone's wife. Alright, you need to buzz off, Sombra. Uh, thank you. Yo, let's go! <laughs> Woo! Woo! Kill me, see if I care! Woo! <laughs> Torb moment! <laughs> Soldier and sol uh, Sojourn and Soldier seem better as villains with their bland personalities? I don't know about that. I don't think villains should have bland personalities either. They're just sort of simple and generic. Yeah, it's fine enough. It's not terrible, but doesn't make for particularly interesting character-wise. He's pants. He's pulling husbands too. Yeah, he's pulling everyone. Well, maybe not everyone, <laughs> but. Think we'll ever see a melee-based DPS? You mean like Doomfist? <laughs> We had a melee DPS once, <laughs> and then they killed him by turning him into a tank that's garbage. Hey, Andrew Grothin, how's it going? Welcome to the stream. Good to see another member showing up in the chat. Oof. Basic story for Sojourn's novel was okay, but yes, definitely written for a purpose. Yeah, it just... it. I mean, I don't know how much you guys read, like, books and stuff, but, like, when a book just doesn't have, like, the right... It's it, when it's written in a way that just doesn't flow well and just isn't particularly engaging on like a, you know, like a like a prose sort of level. I find it really hard to get into books like that, and that's how I felt with the Sojourn book. Final scene was legit good though. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure the book overall is well and all, but I'm also not a terribly big reader to begin with, so. No. Guess you can learn even at this age. Does Torbjorn count as melee DPS with his hammer? Of course. Rather have as a doom as your tank as a ball? Oh, you wound me. <laughs> Uh, that's... <laughs> that works! Thanks! <laughs> oh, I love seeing bizarre uses for <laughs> tree like that.
Oh, so bad with his alt fire. Once use Tree of Life to block off enemy spawn door. Yeah, you gotta get creative like that. Eh. Nah. I'm overloading. Hmm. Wins again. Oh no. Your dance angered them. <laughs> Probably did. That highlight intro so much. So adorable. Please have the dance. Please have the dance. Please have the dance. Yeah! <laughs> Pro Torb! Yeah! Can't wait for the beach mercy skin. Oh man, it's it's gonna be everywhere once it releases. Yeah, you're gonna see it in every match. Who do I play now? The real cosplayer right here. Yeah, if I were to cosplay, I would cosplay cardboard Reinhardt. That's what I'd do. ever come knocking again i know a place you'd be safe bring me another 100 percent unfiltered minotaur power our tale begins in atlas <laughs> Because cardboard is simple of course because cardboard's simple it's something i could actually do <laughs> You think I know how to craft these weird, ornate garments that most heroes wear? Of course not. I knew you'd try it! I knew you'd try it! Was it worth it? No! Is this bell always this loud? I feel like that sound might be bugged. <laughs> You're getting the Lego Ryan and Diva set? Nice, I have that one. So good. I 
Are you getting it like off eBay or something? Because they don't I don't think they actually sell it in stores anymore. No witch mercy cosplay? No. Ah. <laughs> Wanna do a Torb Hammer 1v1 rematch? Maybe. Yeah, cosplayers are talented like that. I, I've got mad respect for cosplayers. Like, that is an art. Getting the Lego set for your girlfriend's birthday and it'll be her first Lego toy? Ooh, first Lego set. That's always interesting seeing people build their first Lego set. Most of them get hooked pretty much immediately, in my experience. <laughs> Lego is hard to resist. What do I think the next confirmed collab will be with? I have no idea. Like, I genuinely have no idea. I could suggest things it might be, but, like, I would not hazard a guess of, like, oh, this is probably what it's going to be. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hey, Kiriko, you know your Lego stuff. Yeah, Bricklink for sure, if you're looking for older things. Either Bricklink or eBay. I'd recommend uh, browsing both if you're looking for older Lego. <laughs> Imagine making a marriage proposal with Legos. Uh, I guarantee you people have done that. In fact, I have two friends who when they got married, um, they had like a their wedding cake had little like brickheads versions of themselves on top of the cake and it was pretty cool <laughs> what the oh we got suzu'd <laughs> first set was a ninjago set back in 2013 ah uh, i i was never really into ninjago um, but it's a cool theme. Your sister got a set of Lego flowers for Christmas this year. Yeah, the, the, the Lego botanical line is really cool. I have the bonsai tree. The Lego bonsai tree is actually right next to me here. It's next to my desk. It is so cool. <laughs> You know what? I just realized we're probably never gonna get a Lego Kiriko minifigure. What a shame. Alright, would you stop suzuing him when I'm trying to charge? <laughs> That's really annoying. <laughs> First Lego set was either Blacktron or Star Wars. Ooh, Blacktron. That's going back. 
that was before my time in terms of Lego, but like, I'm very familiar with all the old classic Legos and stuff. Classic space Lego is really cool. Got the assembly square set for double VIP weekend. It's a really nice set so far. <laughs> you're, you are really into Lego. You got the VIP. <laughs> but you know, like anyone can basically be a VIP, but <laughs> the fact that you use it means you probably know what you're doing with Lego. Should make a second channel called Master Ian Lego Builder. Uh, I, I'd call it Master Ian Builder. And I have thought about it. I have thought about potentially doing something like that. I don't know what I'd like to actually talk about in the videos, though, is the problem. Like, there are plenty of already existing, like, LEGO news channels that do a really good job of that, such that... Nah, I don't know. Like, well, yeah, yeah. Just talk about news updates with LEGO? I don't know if I could handle doing that with Overwatch and LEGO. That might be a lot to keep up with. thought you hated Kiriko, why would I care? You mean about the minifigure? <sighs> you don't get it. <laughs> you don't get it. <laughs> it all started when your grandma got you Lego Indiana Jones video game. Ah, uh, yes, I love the Lego Indiana Jones games. God, I, I have fond memories of playing those. Life Weaver. It was you that time. <laughs> you can't hide up there for it. Where to go? Where to go? Tired of them <laughs> pulling Ramatra out of my charges. <laughs> What's my favorite genre or subgenre of game? Probably first person shooters. I also really like uh, like city builder sim type games. Colony builders, I guess is another term for them. Yeah, Master Ian Builder, I could stream Lego games. There you go. Your loose Lego box has gone to your friend for his child. Well, at least the bricks are being put to good use then. A new generation of children may now enjoy them. It's like Toy Story. It's hard to give it up but it's probably for the best. What's my favorite Lego themes? You love classic space, despite being a 2010s fan. Honestly, I've always been really big into city. Just, I love just like cityscapes and vehicles just made out of Lego. And especially because one of my favorite things to do nowadays with Lego is to make custom uh, Mad Max post-apocalyptic cars and stuff. And so city is like a great basis because then you get like the standard vehicle like a truck or, you know, whatever. And then you can modify it. You modify it to add, like, weapons and armor and, like, extra stuff to make it look more post-apocalyptic-y. 
And so that's why I really like City, because it's a great like starting point for those types of mocks. Grab some pictures of your Lego stuff, posting them in the Discord. Cool, take a look. Yeah, there's a Lego channel on my Discord server, <laughs> for those of you who don't know. So, yeah, it's, it should be evident that I quite enjoy my Lego. Do I want to torb it up again? Nah, let's go junk crap. Plenty of bones to go around. I haven't played enough junk crap lately. Still use bits for D&D at least? Yeah, minifigures actually make for great like D&D models if you have like a like a map layout thing. I remember back in high school I used to make like custom Lego minifigures, you know, like using parts I already had to make like the different characters I'd play in D&D campaigns and stuff. I still have some of those around here somewhere. Thank you for the warning and the convincing impression. Soup, your first Lego toy was the bonsai tree you built a few weeks ago. Yeah, I remember seeing you talk about that in the Discord server. What do I recommend next? That's a good question. If you want to do like more model type things like that, um, uh, that's not my best field in terms of Lego. I would recommend City for like vehicles and stuff, but I don't know. Maybe you're not into vehicles, so. God, there's so much with LEGO. It's hard to recommend something specific, because there's different stuff for different people, you know? Everyone's gonna like their own types of things. No, at least my trap survived. Come on. You can snag someone. No! <laughs> Good to know you're among a fellow Lego connoisseur. Oh, yeah. Lego was like my childhood, basically. Like, even before I was into video games, like, Lego was like the thing I really liked. Have I tried the Grimace shake yet? Yes, I've had it three times, and I've survived each time. So, what do you have to say about that? Funny enough, the last Lego building video you saw was Jeff Kaplan's Yule Log 2019 stream where he built the Junkertown set. It did take him two hours. Uh, it, it is always funny to me whenever I watch people building Lego sets and it's someone that like doesn't, like clearly isn't like big into Lego in the same way I am. Watching how long it takes them to put even a small set together is so fascinating to me because I've been building with Lego since I was like five years old, maybe even younger. And so I have brought, I brought it down to like a science <laughs> in comes to building things. I can build things so quickly. Where'd you go, where'd you go? <laughs> no. actually quite enjoyed the grimace shake yeah it's like actually good i don't know if it's good enough that i would like always get it over a vanilla shake whenever i go to mcdonald's but it's genuinely good <laughs> and the meme has been very interesting to see sort of pop up for the record i was a fan of the grimace shake before the meme harum <laughs> harum Oh, your cousin passed away from the Grimace shake. I'm sorry to hear that, man. You know, uh, Grimace rest his soul. Or would it be Ronald rest his soul? How, did, how exactly does that work? <laughs> Wario died to the Grimace shake. Yeah, a lot of people have died to the Grimace shake. Just about every character you imagine has probably died to it at this point. Hello. 
Have I heard of Rebrickable? No, I don't think I have. Is it just like a resale website? Or is it more of like custom build type things that you like commission? Oh gosh. <laughs> Isn't it berries and vanilla? Yeah, that, that seems to be what the flavor profile is. Definitely berry something in it with a bit of a vanilla. Why is the Grimace shake so bad for people? I think that's the mystery. That's what people have been trying to figure out. Oh god. Basically, it's an instruction site for custom and alternate builds. Oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> Has anyone seen the Lego instruction where D.Va went inside the mech? So legendary. <laughs> yeah, I remember that being a thing. <laughs> Have I seen the Meat Canyon Grimace animation? No, I haven't seen that one. I, it makes, I'm not surprised he's done one, but I haven't seen it yet. I'll have to watch it after this. No! The Zed should be dead. Don't ever get away, Diva. You will get away, Diva. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what was Echo doing there? <laughs> Taking a nap in that back alley? Don't want to sleep there, might get robbed. Notice that Junker Queen has been getting legendary for every single season, not joking. Yeah, that's a good point. Where are all the Ramatra legendary skins? I guess he's been getting a decent amount as well. Saw a grimace video that a guy with tattered duct tape hanging on the side of a tree thinks something got a Silent Hill. Yeah, there have been some pretty great memes about it. <laughs> it's it's it. I I'm kind of surprised how it's turned into one of those like mega meme waves. currently playing Sonic Frontiers right now as you watch the stream. Would you ever consider streaming it in the future? I've never been big into Sonic. Um, Sonic Frontiers never really looked that interesting to me just because I'm not really into Sonic games, so probably not. 
We never say never, you know? Seen grandma's grimace shake recipe? May she rest in peace? I don't know what that is, and I maybe I don't want to know. <laughs> stream Half-Life 3? Maybe if they release it. I'd certainly enjoy streaming some of the other Half-Life games. Just an idea. If people were ever interested. Hold, hold, I'm coming to help you, buddy. No! At least they killed their DPS. Man. Please stream a Lego game. Maybe I would at some point. Maybe maybe one of the Lego Indiana Jones games. That could be fun to do. Maybe it's like a one-off thing sometime, but... I, I was thinking about the Lego Indiana Jones games recently. Like, even before tonight. And I was like, I should dig those up again and play them again. It'd probably be fun. Valve making a new Counter-Strike game. Do I think it's possible they'll one day make the dreaded threequels? Uh, I think a Half-Life 3 is very unlikely. I think it's very unlikely. Not impossible, but very unlikely. I think a Portal 3 is more likely than a Half-Life 3. Portal 3, maybe. Out of all the Overwatch characters, who do you think would and wouldn't survive the Grimace Shake? Roadhog would survive it for sure. Um, most everyone else would probably not survive it. Imagine an Orange Box 2.0 where it features all the new games with a number three. Certainly. <laughs> we can dream. <laughs> Anyone from Junker Town would probably live. No. Oh dear. <clears throat> Ooh, muted Lego or voiced Lego? 
Oh, I think I gotta go old school with that one. Muted Lego for sure. The mumbling is... Voiced Lego just doesn't feel right to me. It just, it really doesn't. The mumbling just feels so much more fitting. Yeah, mumble Lego for the win. <laughs> Mumbling does slap. So it's rebellion then. Hmm. Whoever created accretion deserves an award for how fun it is to throw a massive rock at someone. Yeah, it, it, it's too satisfying. Too satisfying. Just lob a meteor at people. <laughs> Turn off the voices in the game right now. Why? To make it more like mumble Lego games? Mumbling is more expressive and has more unique humor. Yeah, and it's it's infinitely more creative too, which I like. Like, cause it serves it serves to such a specific type of comedy as well, where it's like it just it just fits Lego so well. Cause the Lego is they're toys. Toys don't actually talk, so it's kind of like it's almost like a kid pretending what the characters like say and sound like with the mumbling, as opposed to them actually speaking. Servants are not healing me as they should. You let your emperor die too many times. Was there oh. a miscalculation? <laughs> Lego Mario talks? That doesn't count. That's different. The physical comedy of mumbling is amazing. I know. It's it, it's perfect. Like and especially when you have things like Indiana Jones and Star Wars, which is an already established IP with characters that actually talk in the movies, having the Lego characters like imitate it is like, it just, it, it's just incredibly charming because it's like toys trying to replicate something that's real. <laughs> it's just like their own goofy little version of the actual movie and whatnot. It, it just works. It works with the medium so well, the Lego. One of the cool types of Lego was the Bionicle guys that looked like robots. Oh yeah, Bionicle was... That's where it was at. <laughs> I was never huge into Bionicle when I was younger, but I did have a few. Got him. Sort of like mimes? Yeah, I guess in a way. Although I usually don't think of mi mimes in like a positive light. <laughs> but yeah, I guess that's a good comparison. I guess they're also kind of like the minions from Despicable Me, which again, something I don't typically think of in a positive light, but yeah, it's the similarities. Oh 
what if Null Sector speaks in mumbling? Yeah, they need to add a mumble option for the campaign. Otherwise, I won't be satisfied. Off to bed, Soup. All right, thanks for stopping by the stream. Always good to see you. Have a good sleep. Goodbye. This was the Lego stream. It kind of was, yeah. A lot of talk about Lego. Oh, my. Should probably swap off Sigma to be honest. This this Ryan is making it hard. Ian, give us your best mumbling impression. Maybe I should just do a whole stream where I just speak and mumble the whole time. Touch, touch, touch. Woo. Now to lose it. Probably the end of it. Oof. Imagine a serious character like Reaper or Amatra in the Lego movie. <laughs> it would both be cool, but goofy like Lego Batman. Ugh. There absolutely was a timeline where an Overwatch character made it into a Lego movie. It could have happened. It could have happened. They were so close to each other. It could have happened. You're heading off watch point OH and a Euclidean vision. Alright, you two have a good one. Thanks both for stopping by the stream. Why ask question? Doctor, are we still meeting for lunch after the seminar today? Seaburn, that was years and years ago. But we had a lovely time. Oh, I remember now. But birds, wasn't it? Birds and music. I hope your mother is well. Oh, shotgunner night. I missed. You're leaving as well. Have a good one. Sorry. 
Man, everybody's heading out. Truthfully, I'll probably be calling it quits fairly soon. Either after this match or maybe the next one, depending how it goes. go. That's how the Emperor does it. <laughs> we could have had Lego Kiriko. It could have been real. There is a timeline. There must be. Dark Prince, you'll never leave. I don't know. I feel like I should be worried about that. <laughs> the way you say that. goes hog <laughs> and meteored him out of the match sorry but this timeline is canon i know we have to make the most of it we have to find a way to get by with what we have pve getting canceled as a canon event oh yeah yeah when it comes to overwatch that's probably that's that's got to be a canon event. die again. <sighs> what am I paying them for? Oh wait, I'm not. Would Sigma be Big Fig? That's a good question. He's like right on the line where it's like, maybe he'd be Big Fig? I I'm inclined to say he wouldn't. Because he's not like monstrously big. And a lot of it is just sort of armor. He might just have like really fancy armor pieces he'd wear. Anything good in Overwatch getting cancelled is definitely a canon event. <laughs> opinion on the turret hero mini reworks? Um, I don't have a strong opinion. I'm really curious to see how they end up changing things in that regard. I'm not particularly looking forward to it in that I think they need to be nerfed like that, but...
Man, Kiriko popping. Bet Roadhog would have a Lego set. He does have a Lego set. There is a Lego Roadhog. The Junkertown set. That one's real. Sig would just have the woody arms and legs. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's what they'd do with them. Or give them the ones they did for the Navi for Avatar, where they have like the extended limbs. Maybe those are the same pieces, actually, now that I think about it. We'll be heading off soon as well, Tragic Magic. Well, thank you for stopping by, as always. Oh god. Roadhog would definitely be a big fig. He is a big fig! He's in the set, and he is a big fig. I have him. My rain resumes. Wish there was more LEGO Overwatch sets. Yeah. Ah, I, there would be, too. We know that Null Sector Titan was going to be a set, and there almost certainly were going to end up being more beyond that. But then Blizzard had to go do the oopsie. And now we can never have nice things again. Sigma should have gotten Terrible Tornado instead of Kiriko. Yeah. I bet it would have been more popular if they'd done it, just because of the meme factor. Hope the miniseries leads to more Overwatch animated projects. Yeah, hopefully. With any luck, it's a sort of prototype for future longer series they've planned later down the line. Sigma needs a maid skin. Really? Out of all the heroes to get a skin like that, you're going to give it to Sigma? Okay. Seems like a bit of a waste to give it to him if you ask me. Made Reaper. <laughs> yeah, that would be a bit more fitting, at least. Maybe an Overwatch minifigure series that could include codes to redeem Overwatch coins. Oh, I really wanted them to have a Overwatch collectible minifigures series for Lego. It, it would have been so good. It would have been so good. And now it'll probably never be. Is there a Lucio minifig? Nope. There potentially would have been, though, because one of the sets that was apparently in the works but never saw the light of day um, was a Rio battle set that would have presumably included Lucio. Seen a custom printed Lucio? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of custom printed ones that people have done for different characters. Those are for everything. <laughs> there's I've seen some custom printed uh, Half-Life Minifigures, like Gordon Freeman, and head grab zombies and stuff, those are so cool. May minifig? There is a May minifig. It's in the cancelled Null Sector Titan set, which never officially released, but it was produced, and there are people who got copies of the set. So the May minifigure is real. It does exist. It is out there. And I've been thinking about spending a few hundred bucks to get that set, but uh, it's quite pricey.
Oh, Kirika, were you the one who posted a while back the picture of their May minifigure? It, it must have been you then, yeah, on the Discord server. I remember that. <laughs> BRV gonna cry? Yeah. It's it's so sad. So sad. We, we could have had it all. It could have been great. But it wasn't meant to be. Well, speaking of things not meant to be, I will be calling it there. Ooh, I leveled up. I will be calling it there tonight, folks. Thank you, everybody who tuned in. Thank you for the super chats, Proto and Trist Division. Always appreciated. And thank you, everybody who tuned in. This was a very fun <laughs> stream tonight. I am glad the stream didn't kill itself like it often does. But hopefully those internet issues are behind us. And nonetheless, I'll do the thing that does the thing so it can... Oh, that's interesting. Uh, where is the... Huh, why is my ending soon screen not working? Ah, there it is. That was weird. Huh. Well, on that note, uh, thank you all for tuning in once again. I will talk to you all again soon in future streams and videos. Goodbye.